Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Sean Wayne. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Wigan. Give us this day episode nine and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who haven't yet listened to Out of Your League. And do not let us fall into John Wilkins' temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Mark Flanagan is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, Sean Wayne. Um, we're in a steamed company, Mark. Yeah, this yeah. week it wasn't quite it was a bit, was a bit weird wish. it wasn't quite the spin yeah. that Cliff Richard put on it was it but um, and probably quite blasphemous at the, at the same time but I thought we'd give Sean a bit of work Sean it's impressive we, we, it's, what a pleasure what an honour to have you with us you look I said this to you about 10 minutes ago but you look 15 years younger than when I saw you on the pitch at Old Trafford and yeah. you, you look good then but yeah, yeah that was that was a few months of stress at Old Trafford <laughs> what, it, like a lot of pressure on myself to win that game so it was uh, the end of a tough few months that you know, a lot of relief and and um, I just wanted to get something out that year and yeah. so much relief. I can remember it like it was yesterday, but it was a great feeling. Mm. You, you look like he's come off the catwalk, Mark, doesn't he? He's looking quite Tan awesome. I wish, I wish. Isn't he? Yeah. It could be in some yeah. sort of boohoo catalogue. I've been to Spain for a while. You're week. looking good, you're yeah. looking good. Um, and you, you coached this guy, didn't you, this idiot? Yeah, so, uh, I did. Left, we, what was he like back then? Good, like he is now. He's a competitive player, good player, really good looking fella. Did you think when you first saw him, you thought like, "There's no way he's gonna. He's too good looking to." to no, no, I watched him before. I knew he was. A, I knew he was a tough. And yeah. I knew he had, he had a he had a dig, which is what I liked about him. He, mm. he puts his body on the line, and he, the main thing is competitive. He wants to win, so that's why we, mm. we got on so well. We normally have John Wilkin with us as well. Um, thoughts on him? Bit of a prick. <laughs> good fella. I yeah. like him. I'd love to say, yeah, he's not, not a prick, he's, he's a good guy. Um, <laughs> You'd love to say he was a prick, but he's yeah, not. <laughs> yeah. well, he played for St. Helens, so. Um, yeah, I, I admire him. You know, he's played a long time, a lot of games. You know, far better player than ever I was, so mm. lo loads of respect for You've him. had some, some scruffs with him, haven't you, over the years? Oh, yeah, yeah, with St. Helens, and, and hopefully we've won more than we've lost, and uh, <laughs> hopefully his memory of us playing against us is that we was a tough team, and I had to play against him. If he says that, then I'm happy. Yeah, first thing I wanted to know, and uh, you're going to put us right, but why, why aren't you at the World Cup? You thought you were this. nothing to do with the top squad. No. Um, I'm, I'm putting things into place um, with, with the juniors, you know, with the nines and tens, and, and making rec recommendations, doing a review for Scottish rugby, and, and help with another review to do it. So it's, it's putting things in place and dealing with young, young, younger and kids. Yeah, and how, how is that role? When you first went into it, from, I mean, off the back of a really intense grand final at Old Trafford against Warrington, when you went into that role with the Scottish Rugby Union, what were the, the, the biggest shocks, the biggest surprises of entering the world of union? Yeah, it's, it's very, very different. They think very different to league people. Um, and it, it took me a long time. It took me a long time to come down from not coaching at Wigan and, and, and not working 140 hours a week uh, like I had done for over a decade. So um, it took me many months to get used to that. I'm no longer head coach at Wigan and I'm, I'm an high performance coach at Scotland and understanding the game. And it's only one day a week, so mm. two days a week. So I go up there on a Sunday, come back Monday, Tuesday night, depending on what they want. So it's um, enjoyable, enjoyable. It's, it's a, it's a tough learning curve, mm -hmm. but I've just seen certain areas where I know um, I can improve. I can improve a rugby new player, and it's it's instilling that into Scottish rugby. They're good, they have good people up there, mm. really good people, and they have a great admiration for what we've done in the league and what I've done in the league. So they show me a lot of respect, and I enjoy the job. Mark, you're reaching to come in. I can see you. No, I was just thinking. Going. I thought I, I've always played league, and I played a little bit union as a junior. I always mm. thought it was the core skills in Union that was probably wasn't trained and taught as much and I thought yeah. that was probably one of your remits was to kind of develop those kids with the core skills that probably some of the league lads have always kind of had. Yeah, you, you bang on, there's four or five things which I've come up with, I've watched hundreds and hundreds of rugby union games, international and club games all over the world and um, there's certain things which I believe they don't have covered in, in Union yet, they have a lot of um, the alliance has come to very complicated and they have to pay attention to them. But there's other things, agility and um, your, your edges, you seeing opportunities and taking them the best way they can. Yep. Uh, ask playing straight, your tens, your standoffs, playing straight, things, things like that. Having your, they, they need six foot seven, six foot six players in lineage and scrummages, but they, they need to be multi-skilled mm. and they're not, they're not as skilled as I, I would like them to be. So. Um, that's where I think my my biggest gains with Scotland would be is, is, is instilling them 
just what you're saying, them key score, core skills, what they need to improve on. Just reading your body language, Sean, and tell me if I'm wrong, I'm often wrong on a daily basis, but you said you're glad you took the role. Um, do, you, do you have any regrets with it at all in terms of, I, I just get the feeling that you uh, are kind of missing, itching for that intensity that you had at Wigan. Yeah, I, I'm missing, I'm missing weirdly, my wife thinks I am weird. Um, I'm missing the stress of the, the, the nerves of planning, watching games. So we, we play Salford, watching Salford numerous games over the last six games and working out a way to beat them, you know, to put them under pressure. Mm. And then going into a game what we have to win, we must win, it's a win at all costs. And, uh, and getting, my team, getting my team through that game day. So the stress of that, having to win the games, I'm missing that now. Now the playoff games have started, I'm, I'm missing that massively well. It's like a drug, isn't it, when you're in it? Yeah. Because I, I kind of think this as well. So this, the, I'm sore, I'm tired, I'm sick of playing rugby on one aspect, because you've been doing it for 30 weeks, but when you're actually in it and it's game day and the adrenaline's pumping, mm. there's no be better feeling, I don't think. And being in and around it is, is like a drug that, you know, you need it in your life sometimes. Mm. And I'm sure after a couple of weeks of pre-season, or the off-season, I'll be itching to get back going again. So you taking a year out of the game, I think you're probably in the same boat as, as what most lads are in the off-season. Yeah, exactly. But also, Sean, you had, you had such a controlling role. I and mean, it's one thing being a player or just, you know, a, a coach a normal coach. You weren't a normal coach, with all respect. You know, you had control of everything. You wanted to know everything that was going on in your players' lives, the most minute detail. And you, you, to go from having that to a one day a week, I don't know. I'm, I'm almost finding like you're finding it hard to adapt to that. Yeah, I, to be honest, well, I, I did at first. It was it was a, a, a few months afterwards, uh, after Christmas, when I started to get my head around. Um, I'm doing something else. We've moved on and. Um, because I, I, the job what I did at Wigan, I, I made it too hard. You know, I, I made it hard myself. I didn't what it needed to be. Um, I always felt there was something to do. In what way did you make it harder? Then? So if, if we're planning for we're playing Warrington on Friday, I'm watching loads of Warrington games. So weeks leading up to it, then we play Salford, then we play Leeds the week after. So once I got Warrington sorted, then who's the next game? And who's the game in a few weeks' time? But so that's what made you great. Yeah, it did. It did. You know, but I've, I've got a family. I've got kids and. And uh, without a shadow of a doubt, it, it definitely affected our family life. Because mm. you know, my youngest daughter, Megan, said to me the other day, it's, I like it now because I can ring you any time I want <laughs> And I said, no. I said, what do you mean by that? And she said, well, some days I ring you and you'd be a bit off on the phone. Then I realise it's game day and then I put the phone down. <laughs> so you forget that. I, I can't remember that myself. But, um, but I loved it. I, I, did, I did genuinely enjoy it. I'm, I just always find something to do. So I get home at night after a day's work, and I, I, I have a meal and I get my laptop out, watch training, then I watch a game of a team we're going to play in a few weeks' time. And mm. it was just very, very intense. Um, but I made it tough. I made it tough myself. Mm. And that's just being obsessed with the job. Yeah, I can't remember who Mark, who were we talking about this with in the car the other day. And we were talking about Sean and roles he might go into in the future and all that. And I can't remember who we were talking to, Wilkin or something. And and. Um, uh, and, we, and the, the words, well, the letters NRL came up. Mm -hmm. And I know it's always been an ambition of yours, yeah. hasn't it, to go and coach in the NRL. Yeah. You, numerous years when you were at Wigan, you were linked with, with jobs. Um, recently, really recently, you've been linked with St George uh, yeah. Illawarra Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is that something, I mean, if that, if that came up now, I, I, I don't know you at all, but I, I can imagine you're the kind of guy that would have to think not very long about that. No, no, I'd take it. I'd, 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 I wanted to coach in the NRL, if possible. Um, I know I can do it. I know I can make a success. It just needs a club what's going to think. Um, I've, I've the guts and the balls to have a go with an English coach. and They did with Malcolm Reilly many years ago and they had success. So I just need a club to do that and I'll, I'll, I'll prove that I can kill that job. Was there a conversation there with St George? No. No, no. no. I have an agent now. I've, I've, I'm 54. I've never had an agent. I've always dealt Done, done my own dealings, but I've got an agent over there, SFX, uh, Paul Sutton, and, uh, and and they're doing all the talking for me. If it doesn't come off well, I'm you know I'm easy. I, yeah. I have a really good laugh over here. I have a lot of things going on. I'm doing my speaking, and you know, so I'm I'm, I'm very happy the way things are over here. Mm. But if I got the chance in Vienna, I'd have a. Go. And that would be a priority because I know you were linked with the Leeds job as well, weren't you? But if a Super League job came up or an NRL job, you you would get on that plane to Australia. Yeah, I, do you know I would never. I was never actually linked, to be honest. Well, it was just somebody said to me, 
would you be interested in a job back in league? And I said, yeah, I would. Yeah. Whether it's a director or a head coach, whatever, whatever it is, and, and, and I would. And people put two and two together and said, mm -hmm. I've been having conversations. I never spoke with any, anybody at Leeds. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I noticed when Mark, did he notice this when Sean came in today, which is a bit awkward because I think it came across as if we were late and I know what Sean's timekeeping is like. Yeah. I had to make that point. You, that, both, you both were late. Yeah, apparently we were late because yeah. we were supposed to be at half yeah. one. And it's, anyway, that was awkward. Um, but Sean has a book, a little black book with him. It's not quite, it's A4 a size, I'd say. Um, what goes on in that book, Sean? It goes everywhere with you. It's not Everything. on the table, which is We've got a black mark against our name now. <laughs> yeah. A like, yeah. little cross. Yeah. But you, do, that, you, absolutely. you do take that everywhere with you. Everywhere, every meeting I go to, because I always think I, I might learn something, I might get something mm. off somebody, and the, the, there's always, and I've said that to my two girls, I always take the book in with them, write it down, because I'm an avid writer. I, always, I was here early, I was here very early today, I went next door for coffee, and I, I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing a speech for a big company next week, and yeah. I've just did some planning for that. And when, when did the book come into your life? When did that start? Whew, when I was coaching, I started coaching when I was playing, so 25. Really? Who were you coaching then when you were playing? I was coaching Wigan schools. I right. was by the council. Right, so while you were playing for Wigan, first yeah. team, you were coaching the kids? Yeah. Yeah, and then just and then did you transition from Wigan schools into the academy and then? I was, I was in the like junior, junior and high schools in Wigan when I was playing. Yeah. Then I finished and then I went working for, for uh, Tarmac yeah. Concrete and drove a wagon a bit. And, and But I was always coaching the juniors at Wigan then, the 18s, 16s, 20s reserves, yeah. whatever team it was, over many, many years. Um, working round here, um, I was in, I was round here from seven in the morning around Manchester, selling concrete, dinner time. Uh, I get my laptop out, I clip training for the uh, for my juniors, work again because I wanted to be the best around yeah. here at my job. And then go back to Wigan, coach me under 18s, go back home, um, 10 and a half, 10, and I get my laptop out, I clip training again on my own. Yeah. You know, I, I had no assistant, no analyst then. And did all, did all that. I worked till 12 every night for 10 years. Bloody hell, so like from since signing at Wigan to play to leaving last year, how long would that have been? That best part of 30 years? Yeah. Non stop with non -stop, one, yeah. one club. Mm -hmm. that's, in the world of loyalty and sport, that's mm -hmm. pretty commendable, isn't it, really? What, what, yeah, I, lo I loved it. What do you actually do to switch? Because I know you're, you're still a busy boy now with all your speaking. We'll get on to your, your speaking, which is great, and talking about cultures of a winning mentality and leadership and so on. Um, to switch off, what do you do to complete? Do you ever, does Sean Wayne ever switch off? You're like a pint, don't you, Wayne? Yeah, like a pint. I have two dogs. I have two dogs. Well, okay. yeah. Uh, I take them out quite a bit. I've got a grand 24. Yeah. So if I can get the chance to spend, you know, the, that's been one good thing. You know, I've had six weeks off and on his holidays. Mm -hmm. He's been with me every day and he's obsessed with trains. Yeah. So I've been on a train every day to yeah. every, every week and imagine trams and so I've been with him. Uh, so that was that was quality. But walking my dogs is 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 the way I would just chill out a bit and, and enjoy my life. And I did that when I was when I was coaching uh, game day. I'd take my dogs out for a chill out and four yeah. hours, have a walk. And what dogs you got? German short hair pointers. Names? Juno and Lola. So the, the, the 10 and nine, I was, I've had them a long time. Wow. So I love them to pieces. Um, so I'd go on the game day, my missus would, would ask many times if she wanted to come for a while, but, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to be on my own, just have a think about what I'm going to do at night and, yeah, yeah. and get ready. And, and is, am I right saying you've got a, a construction company yeah. and a cleaning business? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a construction yeah. company with a mate, Mike Sharkey, who flash knows. Um, that's busy. We've got a cleaning company, like a, an FM facility management cleaning security with my two daughters, Bethany yeah. and Megan. Okay. So we do that. And, um, so we're busy. I, I, I enjoy it. I have yeah. a finance company where we do. Uh, invoice finance and insurance and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sean, I want to get now. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do for this? Because I think I'm going to need to open this beer for this next chat. Um, crack open. You're not, you're not drinking today. No, no, can't no. Crack. I'm taking on your best behaviour. <laughs> Mark, you can, we, we can't allow you to drink. Game no. week, big game week for Mark, isn't it? Yeah, big one. Eh? Um, we're in the Northern Monk, by the way, as always. Great. Just bar. always call it the Northern Monk. It's just Northern Monk. It's got to start getting that right. Uh, and thanks for them to letting us use this place as always. Um, you grew up on a council estate called Worsley Hall, which actually sounds like a, it sounds very nice, doesn't it? It sounds yeah. like it should be in Cheshire somewhere and, uh, you know, it weddings does. there yeah. and uh, all those sorts of things. But it, it wasn't nice in that sense, but you had some great memories there, but you also had some, some bad memories. Um, without putting any words in your mouth, what, what were your childhood memories? Well, I'd say getting in trouble, doing, doing things from like a really young age, getting in loads of trouble and... and, and 
my dad's way of reacting to that was, you know, my dad was old fashioned and, and his reaction with that was lock us in a room. 20 minutes. Let me, let me just start this. So when you say trouble, <coughs> what, what, that, what level of trouble are we talking about? I, I know, I know that there's something that you did, which was yeah. came out of another podcast with yeah. a, you rang in a, a bomb scare. Yeah, when I was 15. But I'd, I'd done loads. Of, I, I, was, I was badly behaved when I was young. I had a middle brother called Tony, me and him. I had an older brother called Mark and a younger sister called Janet. They never got touched. But me and my middle brother Tony was was um, we got in quite a bit of trouble from a very young age. Like, were you, a well, yeah, were yeah. you, you, were you almost when you came out of the womb, you were looking for trouble? Yeah, yeah. I started playing rugby when I was five, which which I absolutely loved playing at St Edwards under 11s, mm. and um, and then uh, and then the way, the way we lived and where we lived, you just had to be very very stick up for yourself. And, mm-hmm. um, you couldn't let nobody take the piss out of you. And, mm. And, uh, and that's the way it was, you know, but, but we did a lot of things wrong and broke in places and pinched things and people would get, would get back to my dad and his way of doing it was, was locked in a room and just butcher you for 20 minutes. Yeah, and when you say butcher, we're not just talking verbally. No, no, full on, full on. And I always remember my, my brothers and my mum banging on the door and, mm. and then the day after I do something else and then I get the same again. It, it just carried on like that mm. and then uh, when I was about 14, um, it was um, it was a week I went to school and mm. I met, I met um, a girl called Lorraine and then got friends with her, ended up being my girlfriend at 14 and then 15 I rang in the bomb school and then, then that, that was the end. I, le- I left home, my dad nearly killed me and, and um, I when got say, arrested. When, uh, when, say, when you say he nearly killed you, what... I just, I just, I mean, because I, I guess for for people of your generation, that was and that and that area, it wasn't completely uncommon that dads would treat their well, kids. Well, no, like no, that. I thought it happened to everybody. Yeah. Until I got a bit older. And, and it, then uh, you realised it didn't. No. Oh yeah. no. No. no what what it, sort of level of you know what uh, you say battered you? What four, sort of stuff would four, he do to you? He, my dad's bigger than me. Yeah. He's a big fella, and uh, he's very strict with his manners and stuff like that. You know, but that was his way. He was brought up, and that's the way he brought up. So he wasn't a fault. Um, that was just what he thought was the norm. And, um, and that happened to him? Yeah. So it was a oh, generational thing? Yeah, a generational thing. So you're, you're in a car and you're being punched and kicked 20 minutes non-stop. Mm. And pissing your pants. And, and we're talking like as hard as he could hit you. Oh yeah, yeah. Foot, black eyes and lips and stuff like that. Drake, that's something that took you into your professional career, is withstanding pain and being yeah. quite strong-minded and tough, have that tough mentality where yeah. nothing can break you. Yeah. And you took that into your playing career and then... Absolutely. You know, yeah. My message bollocks me because I always said to my kids about if, they, if they're in pain, they're at the and I've always said to them, you don't need to cry, just count and you get over it. And she always says, it's okay to cry, you know, so we've always, we've always argued about that because I weren't allowed to. Mm. So that was, that was just my dad's way of dealing with it. But I definitely took it into um, uh, me, me, when I started playing, like even now. Um, I'm very conscious that I won't let Donald take the piss out of me, you know what I mean? I, I always feel like I have to watch him. Rad's has always said it to me, he, he's always said this to me. And he said it on the leaving thing, I just want you to be proud of where you go and, and uh, always feel like you belong and don't feel like you have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah. But it's definitely your upbringing. You know, does, that, does that go against you as well, sometimes? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's not, I mean, it can be a great Yeah, because I'm always on my guard and, you know, I'm, I, I always feel like I, I win. Is it know? trust issues? Do you struggle to trust people? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I, w- I, wouldn't, I don't have, I have loads and loads of friends, but I only have a handful of friend, friends where I really trust, you know what I mean? No, no question about that. But the way I look at it, to be honest, Will, is it made me a good better dad. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I don't want my kids feeling the way I felt, so. Yeah, well, let's, it, it let's, re- let's rewind a little, because I want to get onto that as well, Sean, but I just, I am fascinated by that moment and you know those, those days where a young Sean Wayne, uh, uh, I mean, when did it start? What age did he start that, that abuse? Five, six, seven. Yeah, and, and the thing is you never knew it was abuse. You thought it was normal life. Yeah. So when that was happening to you, um, did, did, you, did you ever have conversations with your, with, your, with your dad about it? Was it ever talked about? Was it ever, was it glossed over completely by I'm, your mum as well? Absolutely. By your mum as well? Yeah, I was never mentioned. It just something what happened. But we brought it on, you know. Yeah. I, I, I was doing stupid things, so was my brother Tony. Mm-hmm. We went out. It never stopped. It, it never ever stopped us. It was only when I got to 15, and that was a particular shock. That was a bad day. And I, when I left, I had nowhere to go. Mm. Did, so I ran out and ripped my t shirt off. I had, no, I had one trainer on, and I never went back. 
Did did you have conversations about your dad uh, with your dad afterwards? I know I know he passed away 2013, yeah. 2012, 13. Yeah. Um, did did you repair that relationship? Yeah, when I was about 25, four, my uncle died suddenly, and I thought I don't want um, I don't want this to happen to him, you know, and me not been talking to him. So I went down and said, "Shake hands, and forget what's happened, and that's it." It's so, as simple as that. Yeah. And no apology. No, none. Not, not, because he didn't think he'd done anything wrong. Still to the day he died, he didn't think he'd done yeah, anything yeah. wrong. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, that was, I did things wrong. He dealt with it that way. Had he done something wrong, I don't know. It's just the way it was. He's not done me any harm. Mm. Well, it's definitely not done you any harm. And, that, and I'd kind of want to ask that question. Had, it's a weird question to ask. Had, had that abuse not happened, you might not have gone on to be the great coach that you became. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. In the way that you look yeah, at your life. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I, I just remember feeling really, really bad many nights, you know, in bed with two brothers and just feeling bad, you know, and it's not a nice place to be that. No, crying yourself to sleep mm. and a, hor a home, a horrible place to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty well, powerful uh, stuff. The, the only thing I did, I got, I got married younger at 21. When, when I left home at 15, I went to Lorraine's house. I had nowhere to go, so I went to her house. I lived there till I was 20. We got married when I was 21. Mm. We had kids soon after, um, and uh, it just made me a better dad, mm. as simple as that, so it wasn't such a bad thing. That, that moment, that seems quite significant to me, when you left your house uh, as a 14, 15 year old kid after the, the bomb, square, uh, bomb scare moment. Um, you're walking out of the house, you haven't got any shoes on, your shirt is ripped, you've been beaten up by your dad, you're bleeding, you're battered, you're bruised, your ego's bleeding, battered and bruised. What, what, ex what did you do exactly at that moment? Where did you go? Who did you talk to? Where did you go on your bare feet? I went to a, another estate where Lorraine lived and I, I didn't have a clue of where to go. I, li I literally didn't have a single idea, no relatives or anything. So I, I went to her house, knocked on the door, I said, can, and I spoke to her and, and uh, she sorted me out. And I said, can I stop here for a night, one night? And um, I stayed there for five years, six years, so I never left. But my mum and dad were great, man. They, they, they took you under their wing. Yeah. 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 And has, has Lorraine always been like the rock behind you yeah. throughout your career? Like, yeah. You say behind every successful man is a great woman. I reckon probably had you not had Lorraine there at that time to, to take you in and her family and probably support you f probably mm. through your early career when you might still have had been, been, been a bit of a rogue. Yeah. You might not have been the, the bloat you are today and the success you've been in as a coach. 100%, I yeah. agree with that. She, yeah. she, she's the one what, um, when, when we was leaving a uh, mum's house, we tried to buy an house in Standish, which is not far away from Wigan. Mm. She's a little village just outside Wigan, but I thought it was miles away and I didn't want to buy it. <laughs> but she pushed me into buying it and it's the best thing you ever did. It's still there, right? Still you? there, yeah. Same it's house? Still, same house, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bought for 20 grand. Amazing. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, so she's been the one, you know, rugby, the school teachers who, who, who coached me when I was playing for Wigan schools. I so badly, you know, it's like school by rugby at Oldham. Playing for Wigan schools was like a state of origin. Mm. You, it's, a, it's the one thing what kept me in school. Mm. I used to get threatened all the time, but if you don't come into school, um, you can't play for Wigan schools. And then um, that was the, the only thing what kept me in. And then at the back end of my school life, the teachers didn't want me in school. I was that disruptive. Mm. They you, was were, you, were you a bully? At no. No. No, no. I just think if you reflected that behaviour that was happening towards you onto no, other people. Absolutely. Never, no, absolutely. We used to sort the bullies out. Yeah. We had a teacher at our school called, a PE teacher called Bill McGuinness, and uh, he was a good fella. And he, 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 he got me. And, yeah. uh, and he, 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 would, he would literally tell me he's, he's been bullying somebody. And, mm. And then he'd get, he used to do the rest. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, yeah. I think I know the answer to this question. Um, uh, counselling. I take it you haven't had any no. counselling. Lorraine's your counsellor. Mm. Um, is that just an old school view on the fact? Oh, I don't need it. I'm, like, you know, been been through the worst. I can. I've got come through the other side. I mean, that to me, it's. it's, it's I'm not trying to exaggerate it. It's traumatic what you've been through. Mm. It's a. You probably don't know how brutal it's been because it became the norm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right though. Well, it, it doesn't feel traumatic to me. It's just one thing what happened. It's mm. just part of my life. And um, when when I, when I've been through some tough times as head coach of Wigan, um, the one person who I always bounced, like, and I mean some real tough days, tough nights when I come off and training when we've been in serious trouble. 
I t- I'd ask Lorraine. She, she's the only person I would bounce mm-hmm. ideas off. And, um, and she said some shit ideas over the years. Mm-hmm. But when I've got, when I thought about it over the next few days, she's ended up being right, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? She's, she's nailed it, so she's, she's, she's been a smart one. I, I, I get the impression you're quite a deep guy. Yeah. You have some pretty deep, deep shit yeah. going down with those chats by the fire. Yeah. You and the missus. Yeah. She don't, have a, she don't know the detail of what no. went on. No, still. To yeah. This. You don't, yeah, you don't feel the need to. About 2% here. You don't feel the need to go any further and tell, you know. No. You know. Did you ever hit him back, by the way? Never ever. Do you wish I'm you did? Do you wish you'd done that? No. 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 No, my, 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 my brother Tony, when he was dying, um, he was. Uh, I forgot, forgot lots of this, by mm. the way. And when he was in bed, I spent four months with him. I was coaching him again then, so I finished the day's work, going straight to his house. And um, and he, he he remembered everything, mm. and he started saying, "Remember that when my dad did us both, and mm. we, we, we did that in that house, and and he got us in, and and, and I thought, Christ, I remember that now, and it was like I go home depressed thinking mm. all these stories come back to me. I'd literally forgot, well, I forgot everything mm. on purpose. I must have, I, I genuinely, but as soon as he mentioned it, it come back. Wow, um, how many? You're one of how many siblings? Um, four, or six. six. Two died when he was young. I was and about then, to ask you that. So, and then, and then Mark and Tony, and my mum and dad died while I was working at Wigan. So, so you've, you've lost four brothers? No, no. Uh, my mum and dad. Yeah, four brothers, yeah. Yeah, but they died before I was born. <laughs> I mean, surely you say this stuff, like, and I, I know you don't, you know, you don't need to rehash it all because you've moved on and whatever, but you say this stuff just like it water off a duck's back. I mean... <laughs> You've had a you had a tough old time, mate. Um, the start was tough. The end was good. Great ending. Yeah, the great end of my, my, my career. And, it's not, it's not, not over yet. yet. It's not, not over yet. yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do something else and I'll win something else mm. somewhere. Um, how, I mean, after all this as well, the one thing that sort of stands out, I'm sure people listening as well will think, how, how the hell have you ended up such a, a good all-round guy? Or are you? Or is all, this is all a facade. <laughs> <laughs> That's flash. Um, that, I, I, try me, I try my best to be straight and honest and uh, look after people, but if somebody needs to be told something, um, no matter what, um, they'll get it straight between the eyes if it needs to be said, but mm. I'll give them a way out and... and, uh, and Give him a way of working out of it. So if he's a player, mm. he get told what I, the things in the game I don't like. But you're one of those who gives out a bollocking, and then has a feels a bit guilty or whatever if you've gone too hard, and then tries and sort of you know gets that play because you can see he's down or he's a bit weird with you. And then you think you've gone too hard. Oh yeah, I've, I've done. I've, I've, I'll tip my my bit. Come mm. work for me and my. He's at Man City guy. now. Is it? Yeah, Man City. Yeah, and I, I just said to him, if I, but there's certain players at certain times that they needed it hard. The need to get the message, and I just said, "Man, just have a word with him. Make sure that he's okay. And, and if, the, if there's any further problems, I'll go to his house at night on my way home and make sure he's okay." Um, but it, it always have a way out, though, Will. So if I'm pissed off with his game, on detail what he's doing or not doing, um, I'll be with him at the end of the session day after, and we'll do extras, me and him, me and you on our own, and um, and you'll have tip-offs before before the next game. And I want to see improvements. And, and if it goes week on, week on, you can't do it, then... So it's constructive. It's not just a, a straight bollocking. It's kind of a learning process, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I always I always wanted to give them a way out. Yeah. So I'm telling you, you're not running hard enough. Uh, you're not... You, 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 your detail on your leads, is, you, you're missing your timing. And then we'll practice and practice and practice. And you'll be under pressure with our 19s. And we'll go to a game and, and I'll give you a challenge of... Just get so many carries in the way we talked about, and then you'll be in the office again. If you've done it, great. If you've not done it, mate, this is going to cause a problem. So you'll have weeks of being tipped off about things, and then at the end, it's I'm not sure you can do it. Then me and you's going a different way. Does a lot of this, Sean, come from your days as a player? Um, look, you you won't take it as praise, but you you were a very decent player from everyone that's spoken to me about you back in the day. I think even uh, what well, we were talking to your dad, weren't we yesterday, Mark? Yeah, played against or Terry Terry, Flanagan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. yeah you had some I did. battles with him. Yeah, um, fifteen trophies you won as a player. Yeah. You broke every bone in your face. Mm-hmm. How many knee operations did you have? Twenty-two. <laughs> on one 21. knee or both? Or? Uh, Twenty. Twenty on that knee, right knee, and one on the other. Um, you know, you won a lot of trophies. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, fifteen, but. <laughs> You're very harsh on yourself as what you achieved as a player. I'm just thinking, does that 
then come in why you want to get the most out of every single because you, you, you don't respect the career that you had as a player, do you? No, no, no. I, I, I genuinely, genuinely, I'm not saying this for effect. I genuinely don't think I was a great player. I was, I was an okay player, very competitive. Uh, wouldn't take a backward step. And, um, but I play with a lot of good players and I was in the same league as them. Yeah. Um, but I was never, ever happy. When I played, I was never happy. Why? Don't know. I honestly don't know the reason. I was never happy with anything. I always wanted to find a way of making it better, getting it better. You were your biggest critic? Yeah. Still are? Yeah. Never been happy with, um, like, we're finishing on final and I'm happy, but on the way I'm a coach, I'll just think about a certain try they scored and I'll have to knock it out of my brain because we just won the grand final and, mm. and then it'll be on my mind the day after and I can't wait till we get back to pre season so I can address what I tried, what Warrington scored and, you know, so. I don't think that's a negative. I yeah. think that's a positive. It's just the way it is, the way I am, mm. that I will never be um, content or happy. Do you find that, Mark, that you have to be, you know, as a player now, if, if you're, ha obviously, you know, ideally, your whole life is happy and you've, you know, like you, married, kid, life, everything's good. Business is good, work well, is good. I think to get to, like, my stage in my career and to, to get to where Wayne he got as a player and a coach, you've got to be ambitious and I think you've always want to strive to be better. So even if, my game on the weekend or a performance or whatever, you've always kind of pick holes in it and, and look for improvement. That's probably what Wayne is on about. I remember one of the speaking to one of the Wigan lads who said, you've got a tattoo of Kaizan. Yeah. I've got that one. Which I've is... got pissed one that I put it tattooed on me. <laughs> you got pissed, but you do, but you very much believe in what it's oh, about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've Just explain to people listening. What so, it's... so Kaizan mean, just means make good better. Don't, you know, don't be happy to improve mm -hmm. on everything. So... It's like continuous improvement. Yeah. I've, I've, I've read up a bit on it. And was it a moment like, like the hangover, the, this tattoo? You, you, how pissed were no, you? No, no, it's a bit more serious than that because I, I, I do genuinely believe it when I was coaching at Wigan. Yeah. I don't want to disturb, but it's all over the building. And um, no matter what we did, um, everything, we, we finished a session, a training mm. session, and it would be a great session, very mm. intense, just what I wanted. Mm. And then we'd come in as staff and we'd, we'd go through every drill. Did that work? How could we make it better? That drill was really, really well. This three v two decision making drill, mm. and we work out a way of improving it. And so I drilled that into my staff. I hope, mm -hmm. and I hope they're still doing that at Wigan. But mm -hmm. um, we were never satisfied. No. We were never patted ourselves on back. We won a double against Warrington. The night before we played Warrington and Grand Farmer, we had we met as staff, and we we was and I just said to the staff, "How do we get back in next year? Yeah. How do we guarantee we're going to win?" What players do we need to move on? Players are playing the day after. Yeah. And what players do we need to bring in? Have we trained well? Um, have we got our training times? Uh, our GPS scores, what's coming in? Have we nailed everything? And so I put the staff under a fair bit of pressure of the, just getting here tomorrow and winning is not good enough. Yeah. I want to do it the year after and the year after. I want to challenge cup. I want league leaders. I want it for 10 years. And, and, uh, and some staff didn't tech to it. Mm -hmm. Some staff moved on and you know, but then what was with me a long time understood. Is is every day do you think a, a personality test, the Sean Wayne personality test when you meet people? Do you you you, you weigh them up pretty quickly, people? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 it was a strict environment at Wigan. You know, people you if you walked into the, the Wigan club when I was coaching, I don't know what it's like now, but you'd be made welcome. You know, you'd be the the, the players would shake your hand and you know, because I wanted you thinking that that, that correctly that, that they're a good set of blokes and mm. you're welcome there and um, that's, that's the way I want you thinking so it, everything was covered you know how we behave when people come visiting how they spoke to the chef and his assistant and they lay the, lay the plates up they don't put bottles of water in the gym and, mm -hmm. you know and, and they enjoy life they're doing weights with the mates and getting well paid for it it's a great it's a great laugh well this is one thing I've heard players say about you um, that they if the gym is a little bit down, there's a little bit off, the music's not loud enough, you come in and you're like, what the fuck is going on in yeah. here? Music goes on. Why aren't you smiling? Why aren't you laughing? Why aren't you having fun in here? Yeah. Um, I actually listened to you on another podcast a while ago and my memory's awful, Sean, but I think you were talking about driving past a guy who was working in construction down a hole. Yeah, a police station. Working. Go on. And I was driving into work and he, he was uh, he pissing down. And he was in an old digging, and, and I thought he'd be on 50 quid a day. And he's same age as me, and he was digging, and all his knuckles were cut. And, and, and I thought he's in that hole for, until five o'clock tonight. And, 
and uh, and if he wants some time off, if his kids ill, he, his boss won't let him go up. And I went into work and a few hours later, but the players are in and they're doing weights and I walked in and everyone looked depressed. This is when I've resigned this, this is after I've resigned this, the last few months. And I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not having it. So I I've got all the club, finished weights, got them in a room, and I just said, I'm not having it, I'm not I'm, there's a bloke here and, and he's on fifty quid. You men are well paid and I walked through the gym and somebody was lifting and was putting it in, and they were putting the, the bench press down. It weren't really lifting and bleeding. And uh, and I thought you, you, you're not even getting stronger. You don't like you don't look like a professional rugby player. And so I had a proper rant, you know. And, and I said, I want you to go and drive past that block and see a look here. Uh, when I walk, like, go on that gym, I want to see you lifting, ever bleeding, so you can't do you can't finish your set. That's where you get bigger and stronger. And bitters and I put my staff under pump. I said, was he is he improving every week, every session? I want to know what is he lifting. So I, I had a, I went on for about an hour. They went back in gym. So. Half an hour later, I'm walking back in for a brew, walking past the gym, and when they saw him not play, he's screaming, lifting the weights, taking the piss. And, but they understood, they got it, you know. And the day after they come in, and they said, when I saw that bloke, he's still in that hole. And, you know, it just changed their outlook a bit. And, you know, the fact is, they're in a good position. The, pro the professional sportsman, you're doing weights with your mates, and you're playing, the, you're training, pl playing a game you love. Mm. It's a good job. You get that, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're so lucky to do what we do. Yeah, it's a great job. I think as you get older as well, you, pr you probably appreciate it a bit more because it might be coming to the end, but there's a lot of young kids who, who come into the game now that probably take it for granted a bit and yeah. they don't know what they're born sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And did th I think the Melbourne Storm did this, actually. Whenever they sign a new player, whether he's an international state of origin player, they make them work for a couple of weeks on a building site or doing manual labour just to give them the kick up the arse and get them to realise how lucky they're going to be when they start with Melbourne a couple of weeks later. Is that something you did? We, we did that with our, with our, our first years coming in, our, our new first years. We get eight first years every year. Mm. And then they go, they come in and do like six in the morning, six till eight, and then they go out and work at labour till 12. And then uh, and then they come in the train and end of the day, get home at eight. And they did that for two weeks and it, it absolutely killed them. But it was a, it was a I think that's brilliant, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and, and they didn't like it, the play, but it they understood the reason why we're doing it yeah. and, and it's probably, very important to me that one and they reap the benefits not when they start back training it's throughout the career because they can always have that in the back of their mind how hard it was when yeah. they might have to do it when they finish yeah you're a hard one to weigh up Sean because when you when you went into that story I kind of I could see you in sort of dressing room mode intense I'm looking in your eyes thinking I don't know whether to laugh here or be scared of Sean he's kind of <laughs> he's you know he's yeah. inspiring at the same time as makes me want to cry yeah. that's, that's the best way to describe it um, as a coach then how do you think that people describe you as a coach and how would you put them wrong and say describe yourself uh, I, I don't I don't play what I coached would say I was honest and straight and, and I worked hard on improving them on and off the field you know so if I was in London and we're playing against the Broncos and we're in an hotel and I walk past and George William does say thanks to a lady on reception um, I pull him and say, mate, you need to say thanks to her then. I, 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 I urge you ignore her. And he said, sorry, man. And it's just a check on people. I, I just wanted to, I wanted, I wanted that woman to know that George is a good bloke, you know mm. what I mean? And, and just a bit of a tip up for him. So obsessive about making sure off the field, the good people mm -hmm. on the field, the trained hard, they made the best of their career. Mm. You know, because I've, I've been told that I have to retire. And then you've no more salary, then you have to work. You know, so I've, I've had it tough, mm -hmm. and I've had to work very, very hard, and uh, my family and I suffered because of it. But I knew I wanted to be their coach at Wigan, mm -hmm. so it was a massive sacrifice. So when I, in 2010, when I was the assistant, I, to, to be the assistant at Wigan, I mm -hmm. lost two thirds of my salary. Imagine oh, that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had a mortgage then. I had two kids, and I went home to my missus. Now you imagine whatever you earn knocking two thirds of it off and yeah. I've got a new job and this is, I want to do it. And my missus never blinked. She said, yeah, just crack on, do it. Yeah. I had a good job then. I had a really good business. And um, she never thought about it. Mm -hmm. do it. Two years later, I got the A-course job and it paid off. And then I was, I was well paid. What, what are you most proud about from, and like I'm saying, like, like your coaching career is over. It's absolutely not, is it? Because I, I, I can see no. you uh, winning, winning stuff in the NRL yeah. and hopefully that's the case. Um, what are you most proud about what you've done so far as a coach? Um, I'd say I'm most proud of that I've made a difference 
on, on to players' lives. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd say, well, I still see the Wigan players now for a brew. You know, the the the, the friends, the, the mates. I get invited to the stag dues and the christenings, and you know, so having that relationship with players past. You know, I saw Gil Dudson yesterday, and you know, I let him go at Wigan, and we're best of mates. We shake hands and we hug, and and he, I respect him, and he respects me, and he knows I always meant the best for him. It just wasn't to be that we're going to stay together. So I, I don't, I, I don't. The play, all the players knew, um, I did what I thought was the best for them. And so, when you say you had a big impact on players' careers and lives, are there, who in particular are there any case studies where you think, yeah, that player I had a big influence on him. Mickey. I tu- I turned his life around. Yeah, Mickey. Mickey. Yeah, yeah. Mickey was a was a, a big one because McLaren. Mickey yeah, well, Mickey, me and Mickey Mike, played for Wayne in the yeah. reserves in what, yeah. 2007, eight, around 2007, then? 2008, yeah. yeah. yeah Go on, why Mickey? Because he was, he, he was, um, he, some, some of the things, what, the positions I've been in through him, and I love him to pieces, I have loads of respect for him, I, I, I couldn't come back a mayor with him this week, it's over. So I still see a lot of him, and I love him to pieces. You know, but when he first came in 16, 17, 18, yeah. some of the stuff, which um, the positions he's put me in is unbelievable. But we stuck with him and he stuck with me and, and we ended up winning things together. Mm-hmm. And it's the best feeling ever. Mm. But one, one day, was, I, was in a, I hadn't been out for ages, weeks and weeks and weeks. And me and me and Missy went out with, with our close friends. And uh, we were in a pub and a bloke came in and he said, Sean, you need to go outside. And Mickey was fighting that our pub with his mates, and it was one of the worst fights I've ever seen. It wasn't with John Wilkin, was it? No, no. I like, was no. on pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on. And then, uh, and then loads of stuff, bad stuff went on afterwards. And then ended up driving over to Leeds in the morning. Pick it, Mickey had to go home back to Leeds. Mm. Got the train back and I'd go and drive and pick him up. And um, he, he, his, his family, I remember being back, I'd drag him in car, bring him back to Wigan. Mm-hmm. Come stop to my house and put him on the straight and narrow again, then a few months later, it kicked off again. So you, you just had them spells with Mickey where he's going to fall down a bit, but when he was on, yeah. he trained hard. He's such a nice lad. Yeah. And uh, he's really, really competitive. But sometimes as hard as you try as a coach, it, it just doesn't... No. You, you, have that, uh, you have that love for them, but they're just not learning from what you're trying to tell No, them. no, no. In, in, in his makeup, you have flaws. You know, like most rugby players have flaws. Mm. You know, it's not natural to run from that wall into from somebody running that will sprint and do that 30, 40 times a game. It's not a natural thing to do. No. So rugby, a lot of rugby players are flawed and Mickey's, Mickey was flawed, but to see him like, no, you've got a girlfriend living in the straight of France, travels a lot, to see him happy and content is, is fantastic for me. I think having played, played with and against Mickey in the Wigan sides, I think he probably personified your coaching style more than anybody else. Yeah. I know lockers and loads of other players played tough, but he, he was, if there was any play, player opponents would, he would strike fear amongst, it would be him. You know, yeah. he, he was competitive, like I said, he was tough, he was relentless. All day, he'd, he'd try and knock everybody's head off yeah. and just compete all day. And I think he personified the way you coached a lot. Yeah, and yeah. he carried out probably your instructions on the field yeah, in terms yeah. of starting big, getting stuck into the big fellas, because he just wouldn't take a backward step off. Anybody would anybody. And it's probably a testament to your relationship earlier on in his career that he probably... Didn't feel like he owed it you, but you had that. He looked, you looked after him, so he, you'd, he'd like replicate it on yeah, the field. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. I'll never forget one, um, one when he was about 17, 18. Play, well, I was coaching under 18s then, and uh, there was a player. I saw a player, and um, he's got his hands on the back of his head, and he's taking, and we're defending the town, and he's, he's taking his breath, and he's not in defensive line. So I thought. I'm not having it. So we won the game. So I'm reviewing the game with the players afterwards. And I made a point of saying, I said, listen, his name was Chris. I said, listen, mate, I'm not having that. You can't do that. When we're defending, I don't give a shit how tired you are. You have to defend. You can't stay on the floor. You can't see physio. You have to defend no matter what. And, uh, and I'll go as far to say, the only way you stop down is if you've got a compound fracture your leg, your, your bones poking through your skin. That's the only way you stop on, you stop down. Just trying to make the point. I didn't genuinely mean it. And um, You did. I did. I did. <laughs> and then, so a few weeks later, we're playing Leeds, and then um, and then Mickey gets up from a tattle, and he, he hopped back into the defensive line, up forward, 
So I'll get my walkie-talkie. I said, get on there. Said, What's wrong with Mickey? So he hops forward, makes a tattle, hopped back, literally on one leg. So physio's going on, she's going off, off. And uh, he broke his ankle. And he was still so going I, for I you. I said to him after the game, I said, what the fuck are you doing? Just go down, he said. You told me I'd have a complaint crashed. <laughs> once to get me, I've only brought my ankle. I couldn't get <laughs> that, that, That's Mickey. That's him. Brilliant. Um, team talks. Sean Wayne team talks. Yeah. That is an area of discussion which I'm sure we could talk about for an hour, but try and um, give me some examples of the best team talks, the worst team talks, the ones that didn't work for you and you've had to apologise because you got it wrong. Uh, I know you're a big fan of the silent treatment, aren't you? Yeah, I can be, yeah. yeah. And a very just real just, just explain that silent treatment to people listening. You know, when you, you, you aren't going to start the team talk because you're so disgusted in what's happened. Yeah, yeah. I, if I'm really, really pissed off, I'll just say... What do you think? And they don't know what to say because it's you know things are, they know things are not right, and, and I will wait and wait and wait. It don't bother. It don't matter to me. I, it, awkward silences don't matter. So the players start shuffling, and <laughs> flashing and know what it's like, and then they'll just blurt something out. And at the end, they all knew that he's it, it, going to wait forever. So we might to just keep talking. And I liked them talking because it, it told me that they were listening. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted to win the game. So very rarely, people think I lost my temper in, in team talks. You never lost your shit. Oh yeah, I've done. I have yeah. done, but very rarely. They were very much constructive. So we'd have a game plan going into game. We play Warrington. I'm coming down before the game. It's just reminders. I don't say much before a game. I'll show two or three clips before a game. Just reminders of what the key things. You know, that we have to get to Del Clark and just key things what we need to do. Half time, I'm coming down to speak to the players, and I'm just thinking: is is the game plan working? What changes do I need to make, as in personnel? Um, the last thing I'm thinking is, uh, how do we win this game? That's the last thing. But if, if things are going badly wrong and I need a change, then I, I will deliver a change. I, I, I think myself, to be an head coach, you need to be schizophrenic. You need to be able to change into somebody else. If a, if a training session is going downhill and you're not getting what you want, you need to wake people up and make sure you get something out of the session. Every session. Session before the grand final, when the season's ending. You have to get a standard, and it's the same with games. You know, I, I need to wake people up and understand we're not doing what we've decided. We come up with game plans. I'm asking the players, do you agree? This is how Salford defended, defend tight. So we need to, whatever we need to do, this is how they attack, this is how we fuck them players up. Do you agree? Yeah. And sometimes lockers would say, well, uh, Tommy Lulu, I might say, I don't agree with that way. And I think, and I, and I would take a judgment and I'd change my mind, I'd change the game plan. Lockers is miles better than me. Flashes miles better than I would, was ever as a player. So why would I not listen to him? You know what I'm saying? So we change it. So look, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't give a damn if he tells me something about winning the game. If he helps us win, if it's a cleaner walking around all, or all she comes out with a comment, you don't, I don't give a shit where it comes from as long as it, we win. But this thing with you, it's, it's win at all costs. Mm. But also what stands you out from different coaches is that you very much admit when you're wrong. Yeah. And you get that respect back from your players. A lot of coaches, they're never wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, 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 it, it, and the many times I've done that. Many, many times where I've said something after a game and, I, and I've thought to it all weekend, come in and said, listen, I fucked up. I should never, ever have said that. I got it totally wrong. I've watched the game back and you did do stuff off the ball and you did, you know. So I apologise. Do you accept it? And then the players have the crack with me and have a bit of a joke. But it, it, you're being straight there. You're being honest and... At the end of the day, I need the players buying to make sure we win games, and that's what I'm there for. Um, I know just that we mentioned but Lockers and we've mentioned uh, Mickey McLaurin, the best player that you've coached, the player that you will look back on your career so far and have gone, wow. Yeah, Lockers. Yeah. Sam, Sam Tompkins was un unbelievably good. And they were your soldiers, weren't they? Yeah, Liam Farrell, Sam Powell, um, all players what have come through the system with me. And many, many others, but um, I'd say Lockers was the best. Mm -hmm. they, they always live the in fear, your, your, your players, because um, there's a Joe Burgess story which uh, we want you to tell. Uh, didn't, didn't you call up Joe Burgess, tell him that he was going on a pre-season tour somewhere glamorous? Where were you, Florida or something? Yeah, I went to Florida for a pre-season camp. He thought it was what happened with that? Well, he, he, thought, he thought it was somebody else in Tampa, I number in his phone because he, he was a young player then. 
and uh, and he said, "Who is it? Take, you're taking the piss, and he won't have it." He told you to fuck off. Yeah, 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 he did. <laughs> and uh, and I've said, who the, "Who the hell do you think you're speaking to?" He said, "Oh, it is. It might be spluttering it for <laughs> shit himself." Yeah, we good lad, Joe. Good lad. And he he, he panicked. His, his Korean he finished before he got started. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about your. Um, very much your life now, aside from the, the Scotland role, and I guess it all overlaps, doesn't it? Um, you're, you're a speaker at a lot of business conferences, which yeah. is, you know, from, from Standish, and Standish is a nice part of Wigan, from yeah. Worsley Hall yeah. to Canary Wharf is quite a journey, isn't yeah. it? Uh, something yeah. you should be immensely proud of, yeah. and the fact that, you know, you're filling out rooms and people are there and paying to listen to you and so on. Um, you know, about building a team, building a winning culture, creating respect within organisations, that's something which really gets you going now. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Always has done. But. Yeah, it, it always has done, and um, and I, I, I love it. I, I really, really enjoy it. And it's not hard, Will, because I'm basically saying what we did at Wigan, what we did every day. And I've, I've learned a few lessons doing so many of these now, and people have said to me, um, you need to tell, you need to speak about every detail because what seems like an everyday occurrence, what I wouldn't mention, people don't do that in business, and I mean big business. Yeah. You'd be amazed. So it, it's just remembering everything what you did, and 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 uh, I, I've done I've done one at, in 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 Canary Wharf recently, City Bank, and, and I'm just saying the simplest things about standards, oral what what we held and. The standards which we were driving the week before the grand final. So, well, this is your pyramid of life. Which yeah, you, explain the pyramid. Your, the Sean Wayne pyramid. Yeah, but the, but the, it's, it's it's really really simple, and uh, it's just doing all the the real basics. Turn up on time, making sure if it, if it's if it's rugby, make sure your core skill, and then just make it a bit more complicated. And when you get to the top end, where you're playing in grand finals, um, because you've done all the tough stuff and under pressure. You, you've got that them them, them bedrocks to build on, and but you, you have up. to have those. You have to have desire, standards, and knowledge. Yeah. You have to work from that from a basic. Yeah, because you can't instill that in some people. You don't have that. No, okay, no, you, you? you can't do it. You, you have to do it, and this is in business and in sport. But from a sporting context, I, 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 it's all about core skill and, and, and standards off the field, core skill on the field, repetition, building up pressure on repetition. But simple catch pass, mm -hmm. you, you know, simple decision making. And, Simple like wanting to whack people defensively and, and be tight and wrestle and and uh, and then and then the next level is 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 putting more competition you know mm -hmm. more pressure on yourself and then club room and you go to the top and you know what what I see in union is 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 at the top they're trying to come in up there and they've not got the skills the 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 the, the, the simple basic skills mm -hmm. to play fast rugby at the top and they're coming up here when they can't, they've not done this bottom bit. And, mm -hmm. So that's one of my main things at Scotland. So that, that pyramid is, is, is everything to me. Mm. And, and that's regardless of business or sport, it's exactly the same. You know, do you know the simple basics and have you got standards within your company? So yeah. I, I, I love all that. I, I really enjoy it. But, the, but seeing people writing stuff down when I'm, to me, it's a throwaway comment. And the people are saying to me afterwards, that is mind blowing because mm. it doesn't happen in the real business world. Mm -hmm. So no, I, I find it very easy. It's it's good. It's enjoyable. You know, I'm talking to people who, who have businesses, you know, millions and millions and billions of pounds. They've done something I've not done. They've got a business like that, so successful. I've coached a rugby team, so I've done something they've not done, and, and vice versa. So we we learn from each other. And I think I think one way that like sporting cultures, and like especially with the Wigan team, and like what something we're trying to instill at Salford is, it's always feedback straight away and people talk straight which which probably something you've always done but I think in the real world in different businesses you can't if someone doesn't do something you can't tell them straight look you you didn't do that you need to do it better or next time there's consequences yeah. that's what happens in a dressing room as, as a coach doesn't it yeah but I think having having a business we will call doing coffee and all the rest of it if someone doesn't put a pot away or doesn't do something I don't think outside of a sporting world They've got that resilience to be told something straight. Mm. I think that's that's a massive part of it. Being, having an environment where it, you can have feedback straight away. And well, it's Wilkie wouldn't tell them he's never there, is he? No, he's never Doesn't there. Run no. the business, yeah. flaunting himself in in Toronto. But like you would have told people straight all the time, but you can't do that everywhere else, can you? And that's that's a major obstacle. Of, well, yeah, that's no, that's a great world. point actually. I mean, you, you must because you have your standards. I love them. 
but you must go through life and people that are so f a million miles away from the standards that you live by. And I, I almost quite want to be a fly on a wall when you meet someone that's so far away from what you expect. Do you just give up on them? No, 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 no. I t tell them no. You know, if I'm, yeah. if I'm going to meet them somebody and, and um, I will say if they're late, What's happening? You know, you're uh, saying that with a smile on your face now, but you're deadly serious. Like, you Absolutely. Know, they, they get what? How many, how many, how many strikes? <laughs> yeah, not many. Not, not, not for being late. It's um, that's just not organised and not being, not planning well enough in it. So yeah. it's just unforgivable. And I'm, 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 I'm into my daughters every day about that. Mm. You know, they, they, they're a bit like my, my wife, where it's not that important mm -hmm. to turn up on time. So we have this battle all the time about you need to stay with me, don't take her on. Mm -hmm. You need to be on time. So we have that battle, but um, you don't get many chances. Mm -hmm. Not with things like that. <laughs> um, what, what I love as well is it's so it's a time to be nostalgic with it because look, just think about what we talked about an hour ago, of where this where this started for you, which is not normal, not normal, and, and you know huge respect to you for for becoming the guy you've become. Um, but to then suddenly be holding court in Canary Wharf with these huge businesses. Uh, isn't it fascinating about life how you can put people from you you were a million miles away from ever even connecting with those sorts of people mm -hmm. when you were at Worsley Hall yeah <laughs> yeah isn't it incredible yeah, it is it is it, it's it is satisfying I don't, I don't think of it like that but perhaps I should think of it a bit more like that. you know it is mm. it has been a, a, a great journey but the the, the you know the, the honest answer to all that is over the years, you know, I've got loads and loads of contacts in business and, and that's why we're doing well with the building business and the cleaning business. The reason why we're doing well is over the years, I've just given people time of day and, mm -hmm. and been well-mannered with them and been decent with people and always said hello and, and uh, just done the, the normal thing, just, just treat people with respect. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people like that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, what, it's what works for me and... And, and that's why I've got, you know, I've got a, a good, decent business and got a lot of good friends and, and a good life now. What are your faults as a man? A bit too, um, I like it done this way. You know, so I get up on a Sunday morning, what's the plan, Luan? We'll walk dogs and then we'll, we'll do this and we'll tip and I need, to, I, I need to get something out that day. I don't like wasting days. Um, I, like, I like seeing... I like seeing something at the end of it. So a garden's, the dog's been walked, the dog, garden's clean. What if the dogs aren't performing to their maximum? They always do. <laughs> they always do. <laughs> yeah, they never not perform then. They, they, they run. So I, I'm, a, I'm a bit too um, full on. I, I'm, I'm, I am a person what is But not... you can switch it, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I come around, I've been in this pub with my daughters. We, we got Manchester, I get in the 13, 28. We, we get on with like mates, we like music, we go to concerts, mm -hmm. us four, four of us, like a real close family. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I relax, you know, I, I relax, but when I'm relaxing, if, if I see my daughter at Burn, she wants to thank you for something, mm -hmm. I'll tell her, you know, I don't want that burn, I'm thinking about things though, because you're a nice kid. Mm -hmm. So um, being for too much, you know, expect, expecting too much, um, expecting our standards off everybody. Is a, is a fault, definitely. And in terms of regrets, and a lot of people have that cliche kind of, I don't have any regrets, I live my life with no regrets. I think when people think a little bit deeper about it, they probably do, everyone does have yeah. some sort of regret. Um, going back to your days growing up with your dad, playing, coaching, where you are now, what, what would you think, do you know what, I, I, I would have done something completely different there. I, uh, I wrecked myself when I was playing, when I was a kid, when I was playing at St. Pat's. Um, playing for Wigan, I, I stuck my head in places where I shouldn't have done it. You know, just exactly. out of the two carries when I shouldn't have done it. Mm. You know, um, because I never wanted somebody saying he's, he's scared of taking a carry. Um, and and it, it, I've had a lot played with loads of injections and when I shouldn't have played, and, and now I can't run. So it's um, I should have. You know, like these days, you now players get looked after superbly well. But it wasn't the case in the 80s and 90s. So I, I should have been a bit smarter with my injuries and uh, I would looked after them mm -hmm. when I was a player. I'm, I'm intrigued, aren't you, Mark, as well, to see where the Sean Wayne story is going to go? Because you're still a baby, really, aren't you? Yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. 
I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I'm ready, I'm ready to do something now. I enjoy laughing what, no matter what turns out. You know, if I, if I end up in Australia, if I don't, you know, my eldest daughter, Beth, and I have a grandson, Teddy, it's four, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll come to Australia with us and then I've got my youngest daughter then, who I see every day, so. That would work for you, would it? You know, family oh, yeah, life, because you're a big yeah. family guy. That would... I couldn't not go with, with, without him, Ted. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, do, do you think you have the same, well, not the same, it's impossible to have the same respect, isn't it, from the NRL, but do you have that? Because we were talking about that, Mark, weren't we, as well, about you know, here you are seen as royalty, rugby league royalty. Do, you, do they see you that way? No. No, definitely not. They, they don't. And uh, you, you get you get boards of clubs. They, they don't know nothing about Super League. I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, you they know, know, but they know what you've achieved. They know what you're about. Yeah, it, once they get told it, the people just not interested in Super League over there. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people are. You know, there's people a lot of respect for Super League. So it's just trying to convince the right people who make the decision. And but I'm not begging for a job. I'm up, I'm up here. Mm -hmm. You know, I love watching the rugby around here and uh, doing things like this. And you know, I'm. I've had a business meeting early this morning. I, I enjoy life. I like working hard. I like the things I do every day, which is different. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I, I want to play for him, Mark. I want to, I want to be 25 years younger, which again... I don't think you'd last long. And be a rugby league player. I probably wouldn't last long, no. <laughs> yeah. But again, you know, people, when people criticise me, like, oh, he's this posh guy. He's in rugby posh league. Prick. He's from mm. Harrow School. He went to this, but it, he connects with me. So that's what it's all about, isn't yeah. it? That's what it's all about. Uh, we've got a couple of quick fire questions for you at the end. Yeah. Mark, you don't know about these, do you? No, I don't. Yeah, let's, let's see what Sean says with these. Um, Sean, if you could be an animal, what animal would you be? Who? I'd say tiger. Uh, would you rather have hands for legs or legs for hands? <laughs> well, um, Hands for legs. You have to save Mark Flanagan or John Wilkin from a treacherous burning building. Who would it be? Flash. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> no. Favourite band? Um, Gomez. Favourite film? Gladiator. Who would you take to a desert island with you and why? Um, is my wife going to listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, my missus. If, if she wasn't listening. If she wasn't listening, that... Emily Ratatoshka. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say to them? Chill out and enjoy each other company. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> you wouldn't even need the 30 seconds, I love that. Uh, if you had to work but didn't need the money, what would you choose to do? Golfer. Um, who would play Sean Wayne in the movie, in the Sean Wayne movie? Jesus. Jesus? No, it's, it's a bit... It's too good looking for me. <laughs> um, Christ, he'd be an ugly bastard. Um, don't have no idea. It's been that I can't think. <laughs> Russell Crowe. Yeah. Mark's friends with Russell Crowe. What's his name? The Cockney. Who does the bet one? Winston. Winston. Ray Winston. Winston. Yeah, that's a good choice. Uh, favorite swear word? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> biggest guilty pleasure? Um, whew, I've got loads. Pretty guilty pleasure. Red wine. Favorite uh, food? Or takeaway? Um, Indian. Two more. Worst part of your body? Everything. <laughs> Everything. I'd say, I'd say, um, phew, my knees. Uh, and last, would you rather fight a horse sized duck or 17 duck sized horses? Horse sized duck. Sean Wayne, you're a legend. Thanks very much, uh, One of the most fascinating interviews. I think the best one we've done, Mark, in terms of a personality and a character. We have some good people on as well. Uh, don't forget, you can download, uh, as always, uh, via Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Get us on YouTube as well. Uh, get in touch, join the conversation. Troll Mark, whatever. It's always good fun, isn't it? Yeah, uh, at Super fun. League on our social platforms. Uh, use the hashtag out of your league. We're with you every week up until after the grand final. Long live Sean Wayne. Cheers, well. Cheers. See you, Flash.